What's up, it's Cairo. Welcome back to the channel. We're going to make this intro short and sweet. This is the first of the Brothers War set review that I'm doing today. We're covering all the white cards in alphabetical order. If you like the video, please hit that thumbs up. Consider subscribing to get all the other colors and the artifacts and everything for the Brothers War before it releases here in about, what, 8, 9, 10 days, something like that. Before we begin, I should mention that this is mainly going to be a review for Standard Constructed. I will mention Limited from time to time, but my ratings are going to be for Standard. So, without further ado, let's get into it. First card of the day, Aeronaut Cavalry. This is a common one white, four generic for a human soldier. It's a 3-4 flyer when Aeronaut Cavalry enters the battlefield. Put a plus one, plus one counter on another target soldier you control. Even if you are running soldiers in Constructed, I think there are better, you know, four and five drops. This is a five drop flyer that gives you a counter. It's nothing too impressive. I would say this is a pretty decent limited card if there's a soldier deck that comes around, but it's not going to see play in Constructed. Next is Airlift Chaplain. One white, two generic for a common human cleric. It's a 1-1 one, one flyer for three. When Airlift Chaplain enters the battlefield, mill three cards. You may put a Planes card or a Creature card with mana value three or less from among them cards milled this way into your hand. If you don't, put a plus one, plus one counter on Airlift Chaplain. Now, as far as commons goes, I kind of wish this was a soldier because it would fit into the soldier deck, but it's a pretty good common. So it's a decent rate to have a 2-2 flyer at common, even if you don't get to go get a Planes or a Creature. But say you cast this for three... You mill a creature that you really want. You you know, it's better than just to draw a card, right? Because you get the mill and you get your selection. Maybe you need a land. They haven't played a land this turn. This can give you a land and you can play something else. Or it can get you a three-drop creature that you really want. So as far as commons go, this is good. I don't think it's going to see playing constructed, being a common, and there's so many better three-drops. Next is Ambush Paratrooper. One white, one generic for a common one, two Human Soldier with Flash and Flying. It also has this Mana Sink available. You can pay 5 generic mana and creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1 till end of turn. Nothing to write home about in Constructed, but this is a good limited card. Having a 2-drop Flyer with Flash that comes in 1-2 and then later in the game can pump your whole squad if they don't deal with it, you know. Re removal is uh, kind of tough to come by, and wasting a removal on this feels bad, but it also feels bad leaving it around and then having your opponent go wide with creatures and pump the entire thing especially with power stones so power stones can be used to activate this mana sink ability so i think as far as common goes this is a pretty good card next we have calamity's wake one white one generic for an instant exile all graveyards players can't cast non-creature spells this turn and exile calamity's wake so this strikes me immediately as a sideboard card for white go wide tokens or white based aggro you make a bunch of stuff, you attack your opponent's face, you get them low on life, and then, uh-oh, here comes the Sweeper. Well, if you have Calamity's Wake in hand, you can set a stop on your opponent's upkeep before they get to their main phase where they can cast a Sweeper Sorcery, and you can make them not be able to cast that. Also, the Graveyard Clause of this, XLL Graveyards, could matter. There has been a few Reanimator decks in Standard, mainly Jund Reanimator, and there's some Graveyard uh, synergies out there. We're going to see a lot of Unearth cards in the Brothers War, so if those become a thing, this is even better. I don't think this is main deckable at this point, but I think this is a very solid sideboard card that white-based aggro is going to use all the time. Next, we have Deadly Repost. One white, one generic for an instant. It deals three damage to target tapped creature, and you gain two life. These types of effects are not strong enough for use in standard. Currently, dealing three damage to a target is fine for two mana, but the fact that it has to be a tapped creature means that that basically creature has to be attacking or it has to tap to use an ability and we do have a fair amount of creatures with vigilance like anointed peacekeeper the tokens that wandering emperor makes and simply this is just not going to be efficient or powerful enough to deal with some of the bigger threats you have this in your hand and an opponent plays a four toughness creature and it's kind of just a dead card if this costs one mana maybe but two mana we want to see more than this so deadly repost i don't think is going to see in combat or play Next we have Disenchant, one white, one generic, pretty simple card for an instant destroy target artifact or enchantment. Right now we do for two mana, we have a card called Destroy Evil that destroys an enchantment or a creature with toughness four or greater, which does see play in response to Shieldred and bigger creatures like Rafine and stuff like that. Disenchant does hit artifacts where the other one does not, but this card's definitely not main deckable. Possible sideboard, but I think there's probably going to be better solutions to deal with artifacts than just a simple target one artifact, destroy two mana. 
Here we have Great Desert Prospector. One white, four generic for human artificer. It's 3-2, so it's a little bit below rate, power, and toughness for 5. It doesn't have any combat abilities. When it comes in, though, you create a tapped Power Stone token for each other creature that you control. When we're talking about white-based aggro, even mid-range, Power Stone tokens can be used to cast some of those big artifacts in the set, but that doesn't necessarily mean this is a good card. Whenever you're talking about ramping or getting extra mana to have available, you kind of want to do that on turn 3, maybe 4, not turn 5. And the fact that this doesn't ramp other than Power Stone tokens, which can be used to pay for abilities or artifact spells or pay for ward or things like that, they're a little bit more fringe than I would like to see if we're going to be ramping with things. Having a bunch of Power Stone tokens on the field, I'm not sure is going to be relevant by turn 6 when this thing when all those Power Stone tokens untap. Next we have In the Trenches, double white, one mana for a total of three. It's an enchantment. It's a uh, anthem effect, so all your creatures get plus one, plus one. And that applies to all creature types, which is nice. It also has tacked on here a one white, five generic to exile target, non-land permanent you don't control until In the Trenches leaves the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery and only once. So optimally, you play this on turn three. You have a one and a two drop that makes your things more powerful. You get to attack. And then hopefully you don't actually have to use this clause to exile a target non-land permanent. But if you do, it's nice to have this little addition. I would say three mana anthem effects are not good on their own right now in standard because we have lords for three that come with a body that give all your creatures plus one plus one. Especially if you're playing soldiers, we have one for two now with Dominaria United. But paying three for this to pump all your creatures and then having the late game possibility of exiling something even though you can only do it on your turn is not something that you really want to resort to but it is a nice thing to tack on so this could see some play in go white aggro and token decks next we have kayla's command double white one generic for a total cost of three choose two create a two two colorless construct artifact creature token put a plus one plus one counter on a creature you control against double strike till end of turn Search your library for a basic planes card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle. Or you gain two life and you scry two. So this command seems a little bit weird to me because it kind of, you know, it's not uncommon for commands to do a bunch of different things, but I can't really find myself wanting to do really any of these things at sorcery speed. If this was instant, it'd be a little bit different because that second clause there, putting a counter something on something and giving a double strike would really matter. But imagine paying three for this. I guess the most popular modes would be the 2-2 colorless construct artifact creature token and the plus one plus one counter and gaining double strike till end of turn. But unless you're already ahead on board, I don't think those things really matter too much. And, and when we analyze the current standard, three drops are very, very powerful. So every color has powerful three drops right now. And if you're going to justify booting one of those things to put in Kayla's command, it better be powerful. And right now I just don't see it. I do like the versatility, but the last clause is basically useless, gaining two life and scrying two right now. And if you're searching for a planes, you can't even really do this in, say you have a monocolored or a, a multicolored deck and you need to get a planes. I mean, it already requires two planes to cast this. So you're basically playing this in mono white or at most white with another color. I just don't see it. I don't think it's going to see play in constructed standard. Here's an interesting card, Kayla's Reconstruction, Triple White and X Sorcery. Look at the top seven cards of your library, put up to X artifact and or creature cards with mana value three or less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So this has some potential here. Unlike the other Kayla's card, this is pretty good. So if we think about tapping three mana and then three extra for a cost of six, six is a lot. But for six, you get to look at the top seven. If you have three three-cost things in there, going to grab them, that is the best case scenario. Maybe you grab a Brutal Cathar, you exile one of your opponent's things. Maybe you grab a Fable of the Mirror Breaker, generate some value there. Maybe you grab an Adversary or something like that. Um, it, there's a lot of potential here. Now it is triple white, so it's going to be hard to play this in a you know multicolor deck. Maybe two colors. Three is going to be a little bit of a stretch. But even, let's say the low ceiling of this is you pay, you know, four white mana, you get to look at the top seven, you get to grab a three drop and put that on the battlefield. You're only paying one extra mana 
to get a three drop out of your library. And if you have multiple three drops in there, you can choose one. I think Kayla's Reconstruction is a pretty good card and it would not surprise me at all to see this C play. Next card we have is Lay Down Arms. This is a really hard card to rate because on one hand, it's very cheap at only one white and you get to exile target creature with mana value less than or equal to the number of planes you control and its controller gains three life. So we'll talk about the application for this. On one hand, it looks good for aggro decks because you're like, hey, super cheap removal. I can play a creature on turn three. Then I can play lay down arms. But the life gain thing really hinders your plan. If your goal is to take your opponent down from to 20 to zero as fast as possible, having them gain that life, especially against a mid-range deck or something like that, could really hinder you. That being said, it is pretty cool to be able to exile a creature on, say, turn four or five if you're playing mono white mid range or something for only one mana, even if they do gain the life. Now, it should be noted here that this is really only at home in mono white because it's equal to the number of planes you control. So the minute you start factoring other lands in, it gets less and less potent the more different colors and the more diverse your lands are. So, I don't know. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. I'm going to say the fact that it's at sorcery speed means that it may not see much play. It's kind of right there in the middle. So, it could see that play in certain decks, but other decks won't want it at all. Next, we have Loran of the Third Path. One white, two generic, or maybe it's Loran of the Third Path. I'm not how to try to pronounce it, but it's a 2-1 Vigilance for three. When it enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment. Now, there are actually quite a lot of good artifacts and enchantments in the meta right now. Even without the Brothers War, we have Fable the Mirror Breaker, we have Reckoner Bank Buster, we have Wedding Announcement, we have all of the enchantments that exile your creatures that Selesnya enchantments plays, including Hallowed Haunting, their enchantment creatures. Very, very often this is going to be a uh, two-for-one because you're going to be able to play a card, destroy something, they're down a card, and you have your creature on the battlefield. You can also tap and make you and target opponent each draw a card. Now, if you have this in a deck, say, where you're fighting an aggressive deck and you're more mid rangey or control, your card draw means a lot more than their card draw. Say you force them to draw into a two drop and you're able to locate your four or five drop or your bomb. That's going to be pretty good, but it is situational. Also pays off with things like Shieldred that trigger when cards are drawn, which is big in the meta right now. So this card would not surprise me if it's see, to have it see play. I think it's a good quality card, and I think with the right deck it can be very potent. Here we have another Loran, or Loran, Disciple of History. One white, three generic for a 3-3. Three, three. It's an uncommon human artificer. When this card comes in, or another legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. This is obviously a heavy build around. You want to have artifacts that have hit your graveyard on turns, you know, one, two, and three. Um, I don't think this card is inherently powerful on its own. I think it could be fine with artifact synergies and maybe goes into like the Esper Legends deck if you care about artifacts or there becomes, you know, we have those prototype artifacts that are good in Brothers War. If we see those being played a lot, maybe this does. But it's such a heavy build around card that it doesn't do anything on its own that the payoff would have to be significant with a ton of other artifacts for it to see play. Right now, I don't think it will. Next is Loran's Escape. One white for an instant target artifact or creature gains hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. This is a neat little combat trick for limited, especially because there's so many artifacts in the set. I don't think it's going to see constructed play. One white mana just to protect your creature from dying, but it doesn't have any other use. It is kind of situational. This could remain in your card, excuse me, remain in your hand for a long time. And the scry one is kind of a nice little add-on, but it's kind of lackluster to me. It's not a snakeskin veil where it adds a counter or something like that, where you get some value uh, even after you play it. Next is a really interesting card, mass production. One white, five generic for sorcery. Create four 1-1 one, one colorless soldier artifact creature tokens. Now the type really matters here. So this obviously goes in the soldier deck. If you have the two cost soldier, lord, valiant, veteran from Dominaria United, these are all going to be two twos as long as that lord remains on the field, which is going to be pretty cool. These are also artifacts. So if you have something that cares about when artifacts enter the battlefield, that would be a good payoff. 
This is a build around for sure. This goes in tribal. But even so, it is six mana at sorcery speed. That's a lot of mana to pay for four one ones that have no guarantee of keeping their buffs or their anthem effects if the Lord dies. And it's not like you can flash these in unexpectedly to stack up chump blockers on something. That is a lot of mana. So when we think of something like burn down the house that is red that costs five, where you can either wipe the board or you can create three one one devils that deal a damage to anything when they die, this card is quite underpowered there. So it's very specific. I'm not sure if the soldier deck's going to want it because it does cost six, and you should really be winning the game by that time already. So here we have a weird one, Meticulous Excavation. One white for an enchantment. And when it's on the field, you can pay one white and two generic to return target permanent you control to its owner's hand. If it has unearth, instead exile it, then return that card to its owner's hand and activate this only during your turn. So this is kind of cute, but it's overcosted for the effect that it does. So what it wants you to do is have this out early. You play an artifact, you trade, you unearth that artifact, swing with it, and then if you use unearth, that thing gets exiled at the end of your turn. So you can tap three mana and bring it back to your hand and play it again. Like I said, it's, it's very cute to have those tricks, but it's overall way too expensive for that. And the last clause is actually particularly important. Activate only during your turn. Questionable. I don't think it's good. Next is Military Discipline. One white for an enchantment aura. It has flash, which is kind of cool. It enchants a creature. When it enters the battlefield, enchanted creature gains first strike till end of turn. And then the permanent effect that you get from the aura is plus one, plus zero. Could be a cool little combat trick and limited. Not going to see constructed play. Next is the card that a lot of people have been talking about. This is Mural Shield of Argive. One white, three generic for a three, four human soldier. So it fits that archetype at Mythic Rare. And during your turn, your opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments. So right off the bat, that first line of text just nullifies all the instants that your opponents want to play on your turn. They also can't activate their Reckoner Bankbuster to draw a card or any anything like, uh, I don't know, any other effects, basically, that they have on their creatures, which is actually pretty huge. And then whenever Mural Shield of Argive attacks, create X11 colorless soldier artifact creature tokens, where X is the number of soldiers that you control. So you can see how this would snowball out of control. So you can swing in with a bunch of stuff, say you have two or three soldiers. If you can swing with Mural, she has a decent power and toughness at 3, 4. And if they don't deal with her, she's going to keep creating soldiers, and that's going to be like an exponential growth type of thing. Um, even so, you can get one good swing here, create three or four little soldiers, and have those to stack up whenever they swing back at you, or try to buff them with a, a Soldier Lord. This card's going to be very, very good. This is almost guaranteed to see play in the Soldier deck. Next is Phalanx Vanguard. One white, one generic for a 2-2 with Vigilance. It's a soldier. It's a human. When an artifact enters a battlefield under your control, it gets plus one, plus zero till end of turn. There's a lot of artifact soldiers that are being made in the form of tokens. So limited card, fine. But this thing, even if it becomes a 4-2 or whatever, it's easily chump blocked and killed. The fact that it has Vigilance makes it a little better. Don't think it's going to be constructed playable. Here's Power Stone Engineer, one white, one generic. For Human Artificer, 2-1, when he dies, create a tapped Power Stone token. So Power Stone tokens can only be used to cast, uh, excuse me, they cannot be spent to cast a non-artifact spell. So I did a video on this before where Power Stone tokens are a little bit better than people are thinking, because not only can you cast artifacts with them, you can pay for ward costs, you can pay for make disappear or creature abilities with them. But they're quite a bit still, I think, worse than treasure tokens. The closest thing that we have to this right now is the Riveteer's Requisitioner, which is a 1 red, 1 generic for a 3 1 creature when it dies, create a treasure token. That sees some fringe standard play, but that's actually quite a bit better than this card. So I think this card just misses the mark. Next, Prison Sentence, 1 white, 2 generic for an enchantment aura. When it comes into the battlefield, scry 2, which is kind of a nice little tack on that they have here. Enchanted creature can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. This is like a, you know, beefed up pacifism for one more mana. But it also lets you scry 2, which is 
I'd rather have the Pacifism with just the regular effect for two mana. Again, limited card. Not going to see a lot of constructive play. The fact that it's an aura that leaves the creature on the battlefield and can be destroyed pretty easily or whatever is not going to be that great. They can also just sacrifice the creature that you put this on if they're in a sacrifice-based deck. So not going to see standard play. Next is Recommission. One white, one generic for sorcery. Return target artifact or creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If a creature enters the battlefield this way, it enters with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. Kind of a neat little trick to bring something back from the graveyard to the battlefield. Like we said, there's a lot of good three drops in the meta, but this card is also dead in your hand if they just don't kill your stuff or if your stuff gets exiled. For two mana, it is a neat little card though, being able to recur your good things back from the graveyard. I think it just misses the mark to see standard play, but I do like that it has a counter on it, so the thing not only comes back, but it comes back bigger than before. It could see some fringe play if some artifact stuff comes together, but uh, yeah, neat little card. I don't think it's up to snuff of the power level, though. Here's a card that I've been excited about. Recruitment Officer. One white for a 2-1 human soldier. It also has this ability for one white and three generic to look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card with mana value three or less from among them. Put it into your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. So if you have been playing mono white aggro, you know that one of the best cards actually, surprisingly, in the deck, as far as win rate is concerned, is the Hotshot Pilot from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, which is a 2-1 that crews vehicles bigger than its power, but that doesn't really come into play. So it's just a vanilla 2-1 that sees play and wins right now. This recruitment officer will 100%, without a doubt, replace that in the mono white aggro deck, as it's just strictly better, and you're able to tap four mana. You don't really want to do this, but if you run out of steam and you don't have anything else to do, it's nice to have a four mana reveal the top four cards and grab a creature with mana value three or less and go into your hand. I mean, it's a nice one drop, and this is going to see play for sure. Next up, we have Repair and Recharge, which is Uncommon Sorcery, two white, three generic for a total cost of five. Return target artifact, enchantment, or planeswalker card from your graveyard to the battlefield and create a tapped Power Stone token. So this card seems decent, but in a meta where we still have Invoke Justice, that would be the white reanimator spell of my choice. It's nice that you get a little Power Stone token tacked on, but with Invoke Justice, you do have to have more white mana or a more white-focused deck and access to more planes. But it also puts counters on things, and it can be absolutely devastating. So I don't think Repair and Recharge is going to see much play while Invoke Justice is there. Uh, it is a cool little card, though, and I do like it. Next, we have Siege Veteran, which is another card that people are really excited about. One white, two generic for a 2-2 human soldier. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Sounding familiar if you played Standard over the last couple years? Also, whenever another non-token soldier you control dies, create a 1-1 colorless soldier artifact creature token. So again, with the soldier artifact creatures coming in, so watch for those synergies there. But this is basically Luminarch Aspirant at home. Right? You say to your mom, I want Luminarch Aspirant. She goes, we got Luminarch Aspirant at home. That's Siege Veteran. So it costs one more than Luminarch Aspirant, which is a 1-1 uh, at the beginning of combat, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control, which was a powerhouse in all white-based aggro over the last year or so, or two years, I would say. This is one more mana, which actually is a quite a big of a diff uh, bit of a difference, but it is a 2-2 two -two instead of a 1-1, one -one, and it does do give you the counters, and it gives you payoffs when things die. So this is a very good card. Better than Luminarch Aspirant? Probably not but probably, you know, 5% worse. It'll see play. It'll be good. Next, we have Soul Partition. One white, one generic for an instant. Exile target, non-land permanent. Looks great so far, right? For as long as that card remains exiled, its owner may play it. A spell cast by an opponent this way costs two more to cast. So it exiles a non-land permanent. They can play it again, but it taxes them to colorless mana. I think this card's really good. I think it's going to see play. Uh, there's a mono blue tempo deck that's really good right now in standard. This could see play in that deck if they want to go blue white instead. Exile something, 
get ahead of them in a big way on tempo on turn two or three. By the time they want to try to replay it, they're replaying their two drop for four mana, and you're already ahead of the game. It also is nice that it only it deals with everything, not only creatures. You can exile artifacts with this, enchantments, whatever you want. It's really cool. It's a great tempo play, and I think Soul Partition is going to see play. It's a very good card. Next is Static Net. One white, three generic for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you exile target non-land permanent opponent controls until Static Net leaves the battlefield. When it enters the battlefield, you gain two life and create a tap power stone token. So those little tack-ons at the end, the two life, marginal, doesn't really matter too much, and the power stone token, okay. In limited, this is going to be decent to good removal. Uh, it does cost four and is an enchantment, and these effects are a little bit too slow for standard. We also have a lot better cards like Touch the Spirit Realm, and I can't think of the name, but there's a two-drop one that exiles a creature with mana value three or less like this so this is just a little bit too slow and uh if you're up to me i would make it cheaper and get rid of the extras i don't care about the life and the power stone token i just want it to come in cheaper don't think it's going to see much play here we have survivor of corliss one white one one first strike human soldier one white mana one generic exile survivor of corliss from your graveyard scry two nope not good enough not going to see play. Even having the first strike on it, whatever. The ability to pay two mana and then just to scry two. You're talking about scrying in white. You want to do that with Guardian of New Banalia. So that ability doesn't matter too much. Um, it's going to be outclassed very, very quickly. So it's not going to see any play. Next we have Thopter Architect. One white, three generic for uncommon. It's a 2-3. When an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, target creature gains flying until end of turn. This could see some play with the amount of artifact soldiers that are being created in this format. I kind of wondered why they were artifacts, but you could give something flying basically almost every turn that you're generating one of those tokens. Now, other than that, though, it does cost four and it's a two, three. It doesn't really do much on its own. Maybe fringe play at best. This is not going to be played widely or format staple. Next is Takashi's Welcome. One white, two generic for an enchantment. Whenever one or more creatures with mana value three or less enter the battlefield under your control, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. So we have a similar card in standard right now, but it comes with a body. It is Welcoming Vampire. It costs three. It's a two, three flying vampire. And whenever another creature with power two or less comes in, you get to draw a card and it triggers only once per turn. So Takashi is Welcome, not giving me a body. Just giving me an enchantment that while it can draw cards, I think I prefer the Welcoming Vampire. This can draw you cards off of bigger creatures, say things with power um, three or more where Welcoming Vampire can't. But I don't want to play this on turn three. I want to have a creature on turn three. So uh, I'm going to say no on this one. Next is Union of the Third Path. It's a common one white, two generic for an instant draw card. Then you gain life equal to the number of cards in your hand. So it's like um, Revitalize-ish, right? Revitalize gained you some life, drew you a card. This is not very good. Even if you say the ceiling, you draw maybe a card and gain five life off of it. It's a three drop. I think there's better ways to spend your mana. Except maybe in dedicated life gain decks. But even then, I don't think Union of the Third Path is going to be very good. Next we have Warlord's Elite, one white, two generic for a 4-4 four, four human soldier as an additional cost to cast this spell, tap two untapped artifact, creatures, and or lands you control. So this is interesting because you can tap those in any combination you want. You don't have to do two artifacts, you don't have to do two creatures or two lands. So it's kind of versatile in that way. And if you do that, you're getting an above rate power and toughness creature for three. But I guess best case scenario, you tap a 1-1 one, one, soldier token and then you tap a power stone token and this can come in as a 4-4 but barring that even so if you get that going a 4-4 with no flying it has no first strike nothing like that on it, it doesn't brawl super super well when we're talking about four drops in the format having four power five toughness right now uh it's just it's i think it's a pretty good common probably see some limited play but not for constructed and lastly, we have Yoshian Medic. One white, two generic for a 1-4 lifelink. 
Human Cleric Soldier. It's interesting that it has two creature types, but I'm not wanting a 1-4 lifelink on turn 3. Limited card, fine. Maybe playable and limited. Depends on what we see in white that's more controlling. A lot of the stuff that I've seen now is um, aggro-y. So, jury's out on this, but not for Constructed. So that's going to do it for the white Brothers War ratings. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up. Consider subscribing. If you disagree, that's perfectly fine. Drop me a comment and we can talk about it. Maybe you saw something that I didn't. That's cool. I would love to prepare more uh, before the Brothers War comes out. But hopefully you got some information. This was a good primer for you for the color white. If you subscribe, there's going to be all the other colors and artifacts coming very soon. Thanks and have a great day.